Why are you so depressed? You're not gonna have any friends. Nobody's gonna wanna be around you. You should just be happy all the time. What's wrong with you? Why do you keep doing this? Mended light. <laughs> Your friends are gonna leave you if you keep being depressed. I cannot believe a therapist said that. And yet, it was said by Here a counselor. We Here we are. So we pulled our mental light community on what are some terrible things that a therapist has said to you? What's some terrible advice? And one of them, I guess, in an attempt to shame somebody out of being depressed. I find that shaming always changes behavior. <laughs> I mean, it's the most efficient mode to change behavior is shaming. It's not. It's all lies. No, it's it not. It never works. <laughs> shaming never works. Well, and shaming is the tactic of somebody who feels like they've run out of options and doesn't know what to say. And if I'm a therapist and I'm getting to a place of shaming people, I would rather say, you know, I'm not 100% sure how to help you today. I think we need to take a break for the, this week. I'll see you next week. I'm going to regroup and think of some new approaches. Mm -hmm. And I'd like for you to do the same or push come to shove. You know, I think we've gone as far as we're able to go together. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other ideas mm -hmm. and, and make the referral. But to get to a place to say your friends are going to leave you. It's so damaging. Yeah. Because innately, the therapist-client relationship is one of authority. Yeah. Right? And you're going to therapy because you need support. And to, to be treated in such a callous, unkind, shaming way. Yeah. I mean, I just hope wasn't devastating for the person that was told this. I hope so as well. It, it reminds me, I had a client one time who talked about her relationship with her father growing up. Mm -hmm. And her father told her, you're never going to amount to anything. You're pathetic. You're a loser. You're not going to succeed. And to spite her father, she pushed herself in school. She became a tremendous success. And he said, this is what I was always going for. I was giving you someone to push against. And she said... Dad, the end result is that I hate you and I don't want a relationship with you. Oh, wow. So one, either she turned out to be a success and he changed his tune. I knew you had it in you all along. Or that really was his strategy, in which case that's awful. And I could see and maybe... And some help. Well, I could see maybe a therapist trying a similar thing of, I'm going to give this person someone to push against. Like, I, here's why I think a therapist... Like a, the devil's advocate. Yeah, in a misguided effort would say something like this. I've tried being nurturing. I've tried being compassionate. I've tried being empathetic. And this person is still stuck in a funk. So I'm going to try doing the opposite and see if that's what works for them. But it's not worth the gamble. It's not worth the gamble to tell a depressed person that they are essentially worthy of abandonment and not being loved because of a condition of depression, which they didn't choose or ask for. So I have a question for you. Yeah. What would be your counter advice to this terrible advice? <laughs> this person is sitting on your couch or chair, whatever. Yeah. You know, you're sitting in an office. Standing in the corner because, stand, they, because shame. they're shame. Yeah. It's shame. <laughs> um, and they say, this is what my last therapist told me. I'm still struggling, struggling with depression. What do I do? I would make some joke about having to undo the damage of what the other therapist did. Uh, and it would only be half joking. And then I would let them know that their depression is not something they chose. I've yet, I've yet to meet the person who chooses depression. Right. I've yet to meet the person who says, yes, I wanted this in my life. And because you didn't choose it, there's guilt and there's shame. And I think shame is never a positive, it's never useful, it's never helpful. Shame is directed at your identity, it's directed mm -hmm. at who you are. It's saying, I am pathetic, I am unlovable, I am unworthy. Guilt, on the other hand, can be healthy, can be helpful, if it's directed at a behavior that we chose, that we can change, Right. right? But depression isn't chosen, and very often it can be managed or alleviated, but changed or just done away with. Yeah. Most people who struggle with depression this is kind of their cross to bear. Mm -hmm. And they can still find a happy, fulfilling life, but the depression is part of it. Mm -hmm. So to, first of all, to guilt somebody for depression doesn't make any sense. 
because even in the case of healthy guilt, it's not something they chose and it's not something they can change. Much more shame somebody for it. Mm -hmm. it, it serves no purpose. And, and so what I just said, I would say to that client to lay out why what their previous therapist did was wrong, mm -hmm. why the person in front of me is not at fault for feeling depression. And then we go into, let's unpack. When your therapist said that, did it land as something fearful? Like, I think it was wrong of them to say that, but did it elicit a response, an emotional response? Because I'd be interested to know if the person said, no, I just thought that therapist was an idiot and that's right. why I'm not seeing them anymore because right. who the hell says that? Or if they say, yeah, that actually terrifies me. Yeah. I would want to know that first and foremost. And then okay. if they accepted, even though it was an untrue thing to say, if they accepted that in as some sort of truth. Yeah, because right. I would want to know that before knowing how to proceed. And if they did, I'd say, let's explore that, shall we? And ultimately the fact is, if someone is truly a friend, they don't abandon you when things are hard. If someone is truly a friend, they may, they may draw boundaries for themselves in their life, you know, but they're not just gonna say, I don't care anymore. And in the case of depression, someone who would leave you because you're a downer, someone who would leave you because you're struggling, isn't truly a friend anyway. Mm -hmm. That's a fair weather good time buddy is all that is. Just, you know, I just, talking about depression, I think of Eeyore, right? Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong. Like, you have to know the sorrow to know the joy, right? Yeah. You have to know the hard to know the good, right? And there's, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of Eeyore-ness in no, our life. No, not at all. You know, going to that place of whether it's grief or sadness or whatever it is, having that healthy self-expression, giving yourself the safe space to express that yeah. and saying, okay, what am I gonna do now? Well, and what's curious to me about the Eeyore situation is I've heard from a lot of people who struggle with depression that not just Eeyore, but Eeyore's friends are mm -hmm. a wonderful role model of this because even though, yes, they do try and cheer Eeyore up sometimes, when they fail to cheer him up, they don't stop hanging out with him. Right. They just sit with him. They just sit with him. Or they do their thing and they're glad he's there. Right. Like, because if I'm, if I'm depressed, the last thing I want to do is bring down the group. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I may withdraw from people because I feel like I'm a party pooper and I'm a downer when I really do need that camaraderie. I really do need that friendship. I just can't reach the same level of happiness or joy that they can, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be excluded. But I, if I'm insecure, I may think, well, I shouldn't be here because I'm a downer. And what I love about Pooh and Piglet and Tigger and all of them is they're, they're just happy that he's there. And when he's sad, they let him be sad. They don't make him try and be happy. And they- He's not a problem to be fixed. He's not a problem to be fixed. And when he's like, have you seen my tail? They help him find his tail. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And maybe this is what your friends need. Maybe your friends want to be your friends, but they don't know how to help. Yeah. And they feel like failures because they try and cheer you up and it doesn't work. And I find that the direct approach is best when we, we think of how should I say this, that, or the other, just be direct. Guys, I love you. I love being your friend. I'm grateful for you and I'm grateful to be around you. I'm struggling with depression. That doesn't mean I have to be a bummer for the group. What it does mean is that sometimes you're gonna try and cheer me up and it's not gonna work. And in those moments, what I really need is X, Y, or Z. And X, Y, or Z could be, I may need you to hold my hand or put your arm around me. I may need you to cry with me. I may need you to hear me. I may need you to just be normal and do your own thing. And by normal, I mean, uh, what's the normal behavior for this person or that person, not the normal standard for human behavior. Right, I, I want you right. to keep being you and just let me exist in the same space with you. Right. Well, and conversely, like you can say that you can say that is the person that's depressed. It's okay. Yeah. Depression is acceptable, <laughs> <laughs> but conversely, the friend can say, Hey, it seems like you're having a hard time. Yeah. Like what, what's going on for you? Yeah. How can I support you? Like, can I call you every day? Can I text you every day? Do you want to come to lunch? Like, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure when I, when I call you and you're having a hard time, do you want to come out with us? Is yeah. that helpful calling regardless of whether or not you're going to come? And if you're watching this and you have a friend who is depressed, 
or anyone going through a hard time, one of my favorite phrases is, I want to be here for you and I'm not sure how to do it. Yeah. Expressing that want and then letting the other person tell you how. Yeah. And so as, you know, I've had, it, and in college, I had a roommate who was depressed. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure what to do for him. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure what my role was as friend and my responsibility. And once we got into this place of, yeah, there'll be days you can't cheer me up, but I still want to be around you. <laughs> so I remember his story. Oh yeah. This is, yeah. Okay. Listen, fine. <laughs> I'll tell the story. Um, this roommate had a hard time. Sometimes if your friend is depressed, what they need is someone obnoxious in their life, but you need to know that this is a good fit for them. So he had a hard time getting out of bed and seeing hope and light in the world. And so, and get, and then he would miss class and he'd fall behind in his classes. But and, he, if he got that, that like push to get out of bed, it could make all the difference. And so one, so one morning, I don't know what came over me and I just went in and I opened the door and with his light switch, he's laying in bed and it's pitch black in there. And I go, and I switch his lights off and on. And he goes, and he puts his pillow over his head. And he thought I was going to stop. But once he put his pillow over his head, I, I paused. I turned the light off. His body relaxed. And then I went, and he goes, ah! and he throws the pillow. And he's like, I'm up, I'm up. And I said, I'm going to do that every day. He says, don't you dare. I'm like, I am. And here's the thing. I'm not saying that is the best fit for every relationship, but in the, but he really appreciated it. Like not that day, but that kind of became our thing. And he would be annoyed, but he'd laugh. Mm -hmm. And the combination of the strobe and the excessive noise and the laughter and the annoyance got him out of bed. And he told me later that in his case, it was something he appreciated because it got him to class and it got him going for the day. And thinking that maybe things aren't so gloomy if I have a roommate who loves me enough to annoy the hell out of me. So there you go. I'm not saying this is a one size fits all solution. This may be terrible for some people, but it worked for us. Your friends, if your friends distance themselves, if they're true friends, the only reason they would distance themselves is because they're getting the message from you, or they think they are, that they're not go welcome or go away alone. and leave me alone. And so maybe on your end, the communication could be, this is what I need from you, right? Yeah. Is X, Y, or Z. Uh, and this is what it's like for me. And, and this is what I expect from you and what I don't expect from you. Like, I expect you and I hope you'll call me, you'll text me. In my case, like, I, I hope you'll flash my lights off and on and get me out of bed. I don't expect you to make me feel better. That's not your job, right? right. And so that can be a very helpful thing. I'm so glad you overcame your depression. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you ever get in that big of a funk, I'm going to start doing that with the lights. Fair. If you enjoyed this video, check out the video. And you did. You did. Check out the video. You shouldn't marry if you're of different faiths. That is what a therapist said. Were they right? Mm -hmm. If you've struggled with depression, what helps you on a daily basis? If you have friends or family that struggle with depression, how do you support them? We want to know. Until next time, keep shining because we need your light. And here's that video we were telling you about. Clickety click. You don't even have to worry about what you're doing for the next 10 or 15 minutes. You're hanging out with us. That's what you're doing. It's right there. Do it. Do it now.